Listen carefully because this is Dr. Kerry C's new prediction. I think that we can probably say right now how big it will be. I will bet that the next significant earthquake here will be at least an 8.2 and possibly an 8.7 or a little larger. So this is the one that we think will produce the granddaddy. Where we are now. Yeah. Dr. C, the geology professor at California Institute of Technology, knows Indonesia's earthquake zone like the back of his hand. That's why he was able to forecast the Boxing Day quake and why he predicts another now. More on that forecast later, but first, why did this happen and why so many deaths? This is the most telling 40 seconds of video of all. It clearly shows why so many never stood a chance. But first, the water in this Banda Ache street is about ankle depth. Moments later, the speed is so fast and the volume so great, it's meters deep, up to first floor level. Emma! Emma! It's a deadly soup of cars, trees, houses, and of course, people. No wonder the tsunami's death toll is now passing 300,000. Now, in a sense, you've spent your whole life anticipating this. Now that it's happened, how do you feel? I'm not surprised. Uh, it's, uh, it's traumatic to see the damage. It's traumatic to see people's lives uh, so abruptly changed, so many lost. But it's, um, it's part of what we have to, what we're going to be seeing more of in the 21st century. Dr. C's focus is on the fault line, 5,000 kilometers long, where moving plates of the Earth's crust grind against each other. The plate under the Indian Ocean slides beneath Indonesia, much like the disappearing stairs on an escalator. But some sections get stuck and then later snap upwards, releasing gargantuan force. The plates get hung up and they can't slip past each other and so the, the upper plate gets dragged down as this plate sinks and with it the islands get dragged down slowly but surely and then when the earthquake happens they poop, poop, uh, pop back up and out. And that's what happened last Boxing Day. The quake jolted the mainland so violently that people were thrown to the ground. It was deceptive in that there was no typical wave formation, but it was moving so quickly and it was so engulfing, and I thought, this, this, is, this is bad, this is very bad. Sean Devitt, a producer here on 60 Minutes, was holidaying on Thailand's Phi Phi Island. The waves just keep coming. It used to be our restaurant down there. After a massive surge hit the resort just after breakfast, he grabbed a camera and raced to the beach to see the damage. He was just in time for a second surge. Shit! It was like a shadow chasing you up, up the beach. It was always there behind you, no matter when you looked around. And, and fortunately, there was a tree nearby, and I scrambled up this tree as quick as I could, thinking, I've got to get up here. I'm up a tree. It just came in so quick. Some who survived the surge attempted to save a woman who'd been sucked under. The colour in her face, we knew that it wasn't good. And we tried the best we could to, to revive her, but it was just, she was too far gone. Now, from the early things that I saw, I thought, this can't get any worse. And I was so wrong. We had to pronounce it dead. If you wander around the destruction in the aftermath of a war, or where some terrorist bomber has gone about his business, then at least there, there's someone to blame. And in a sense, there's also a solution. Because if just those two sides would solve their differences, then there wouldn't be all that suffering. But who do you blame for all of this? 
Oh my god! For Dr. C, science has the answer. He's a regular visitor to these Mentawai Islands to monitor the fault line directly below. The most useful archives are underwater. The layers of coral reveal the seafloor's geological history. The corals show very clearly that the, the islands, uh, uniformly along this stretch, the islands are, are submerging at, at precipitous rates. All these trees are sh show that they're getting drowned and the beaches are encroaching on the land as the land sinks. And uh, so it's a very visually dramatic uh, manifestation of strain accumulation. On land, he measures this more precisely. It's not easy. Treks through humid jungle to mountaintops where Dr. C has installed 14 satellite tracking stations. Ah. How are you doing? So what have we discovered? <laughs> well, this is actually where we have the battery. GPS yeah, so readings down show down the down islands down. not just sinking, they're being shoved sideways year by year by the two plates about, uh, grinding uh, against uh, each other below. About every 200 years, all that strain, all that s s squishing of the spring is released in a gi in giant earthquake. He found the fault ruptures in different sections at different times, and a massive earthquake was due because each section erupts about every 200 years. Alarmed by this, Kerry C. began sounding a warning. We started just six months ago uh, handing out the posters and brochures and giving lectures in churches and lectures in classrooms. He also alerted the Indonesian government, and then came Boxing Day. First we thought it was this beautiful North Shore Hawaii wave, you know, my little mind went, oh, how pretty. And as we realized that there are no waves in this bay. American travelers Julie Sobolowski and her son Casey were in a sailing holiday off Thailand when a 10 meter wave came out of nowhere. They were about to go snorkeling near a small island. tried to outrun it. We turned the boat and we were trying to head away from it and it became very obvious very quickly that there was no way that was going to happen. It was coming very fast so we turned back into it and took it bow on. They sailed behind the island at precisely the right time. The reef took the full force. Other boats weren't so lucky. I had no idea that there was so much force that it literally blew them apart. You know, the boats just were splintered. You know, we just started pulling people out of the water. So at one point we had 20 people on the boat that didn't speak English, and I remember trying to tell them to, you know, sit down, hold on, and it was, it was very scary. Of course, it's no comfort to hear that Dr. C predicted all this, but the truly frightening part is he's predicting it will all happen again at another section of the fault line. When, he says, soon. The data is not going to get a whole lot better than this. It, it, this is going to happen. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out the chances are pretty high that it'll happen within the life of the within the life of the children running around the streets. Whether it's a few weeks or a few decades, I don't know. Professor Kerry C is the preeminent world authority on earthquakes in this region. Nobody knows more than he does. Now, remember what happened. There's the big island of Sumatra up here. Aceh, where all the damage was, and the earthquake occurred just off here. Down here, a series of little islands where the professor has his measuring stations, and right here is where he says the next big one is going to be. Directly opposite is this place, Padang, a city of a million people. I mean, this place has trouble dealing with a high tide. The effects of a tsunami here are almost beyond comprehension. Imagine a city the size of Brisbane wiped off the map. Banda Aceh all over again? You know, people can't just run out of Padang. You know, it's impossible. You know, it's too big. So you feel an earthquake, you get a 15-minute warning, and next thing you know, the tsunami's coming down the street with barrels of oil and cars and wood, and uh, you just run for your life. Some of you make it, some of you don't.
The city of Padang is a base for Australians coming to surf the renowned waves of the Mentawais. The waves hit the islands out of super deep water, creating some of the best surfing breaks in the world. Chris Scurra from Melbourne runs a surf charter business out of Padang, and his American partner, Christine Fowler, runs a hotel. They're heeding the earthquake warnings because Dr. C has warned them once before. He said, as soon as they saw the water rushing out of the river, I had a half an hour to get across that bridge and up that hill. On Boxing Day, the water rushed in and out of the river for most of the day. And it was rushing out really fast. This was amazing. I looked down to the bank of the river and there were crabs running, trying to catch up with the water. So my heart started beating like a million miles an hour and I thought of Carrie because I had sat and chatted with Carrie here one evening and he had told me what would happen during a tsunami. Everyone's listening to Dr. C now. He's returning to see the islanders he warned last year. They put on a hero's welcome, and this time they hang on his every word. He shows them the evidence that tsunamis can wipe out vulnerable places like this in just moments. His message is simple. If you feel the earth shake, run for the hills. And they'll be scared, but hopefully that'll be a, a wonderful uh, wake-up call for them. Okay, time to get up onto the hill here. So we've taught them come up the hill and get here by 15 minutes because if you don't, you might have a tsunami that, that will kill you. Coming again! Coming again! Back up! Dr. C says it's always difficult to convince people to prepare for an earthquake that might happen. But with 300,000 lives lost from just a momentary shudder, he's hoping that the world will listen to the warnings he's now given. I think it's quite possible, it's quite likely that there'll be million person losses because of geological happenings in the 21st century. You can't stand here and say there are a million and are going to die. Sure. Something should be done about it. Well, I'd love to, I'd love to have something done about it, uh, uh, but in a way, a lot of us geologists feel like Jeremiah's. You know, we feel like we're or, or John the Baptist, a voice calling in the wilderness. I know we're going to try our best to communicate what could happen, and then we'll see what the, um, what the leaders of the, of the community, what the leaders of the country want to do. But Indonesia isn't alone. You know, uh, uh, many, many countries have uh, hazards like this, and many, ha many countries will in the 21st century, given the status quo anyway, will lose hundreds of thousands of people. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.